Tonight, the Justice Department is no longer opposing the unconditional release of John Hinckley, who tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan 40 years ago. At the time, the White House kept secret that the president nearly died, the bullet barely missing his heart. A jury had ruled Hinckley, then 25, not guilty by reason of insanity, but ordered him confined to a mental institution for life. Hinckley also paralyzed former White House press secretary Jim Brady, who died in 2014. Hello, good friends. And two officers. A medical examiner ruled Brady's death a homicide. A D.C. judge ruling that Hinckley, now 66, has displayed no signs of mental illness or interest in weapons for decades after spending years in psychiatric confinement and finally living under court supervision with his parents in Williamsburg, Virginia. His mother died in July. Hinckley's internet use was restricted, and he was forbidden from being in the proximity of his victims' families and politicians. Those rules will be dropped when the decision takes effect in June. Why do you want me to go back to my parents? Hinckley had confessed to shooting Reagan to impress actress Jodie Foster, whom he had been obsessed with since seeing her in Taxi Driver. His lawyer today calling the decision a win for mental health care. That is what I believe to be the important message in this case, that people who are ravaged by mental disease, with proper support, with good treatment, can achieve mental stability and become productive members of the society. President Reagan's son, Michael, reacting to the decision, tweeting, FYI, my father forgave Hinckley and would approve. Therefore, so do I. Andrea Mitchell joins us now from Washington. And Andrea, when you see that video, you are reminded how close John Hinckley came to killing President Reagan. He ended up putting former Press Secretary James Brady in a wheelchair forever. And he will soon be a free man because at the core of this case, from the get-go, was the issue of mental health. The U.S. District Judge in granting the unconditional release saying, quote, I think it's probably overdue. Exactly. And it, it is concerning to a lot of people. I know a lot of them. I was there, covered the assassination attempt, no, knew Jim Brady and Sarah Brady so well. But the argument, the counter-argument from the family, from the Hinckley family, from his doctors, from his lawyer, is that he has shown no sign of mental illness in decades, not since 1983, they say, and has not shown any interest in weapons or any kind of violent behavior. He's been living under medical and family supervision and court supervision at home in Williamsburg, Virginia, for the last couple of years. And now they're saying that he should be free. His mother died in July, so there is no parental control anymore, and that he's 66 years old. The counter-argument uh, from the Reagan Foundation is that he's still a threat, and people who are close to Ronald Reagan and know him well, although the family itself is divided, say that he uh, should not be released and that he should serve life as the jury decided, that he was found to be guilty by reason of insanity, but that he should serve life in some kind of institutional setting. There is a lot of concern at one point point, certainly, among the neighbors in Williamsburg as well, about him being totally free. And I can relate, uh, actually, to both sides, knowing very well the Reagans and the way Nancy Reagan felt about this. But Michael Reagan, one of his children, says, one of his surviving children, says that my father forgave John Hinckley, and so, so should I. Andrea Mitchell, we appreciate that deep perspective tonight. Andrea, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.